private schools in Toronto and how to choose the right one for your child. I'm going to share my thoughts and my own experience to help you in the process of deciding whether private schooling is right for your child and if yes, what school will maximize your kid's potential. Hello, my name is Olena. I'm a real estate broker here in Toronto. My team and I help our clients to relocate to Toronto or simply to choose a great neighborhood in the city. This video is not about real estate. It is about your consideration as a parent for your child to join a private school environment with certain values which may or may not meet your expectations. But before I begin, for those of you who are visiting my channel for the first time, please subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified every time I post a new video about living in Toronto as well as its real estate. And for my entire audience, if you like the videos, uh, please like, comment down below and contact me if you have any questions. Let's begin. If you consider private school for your child, you might be interested why some parents choose private schooling. As one of those parents, I must say that there are basically the same few reasons for all of us. Parents often feel their children need extra attention and a special approach. Another reason is uh, that the classes are small. This gives more time and attention to each kid. Parents also say that their kids are happier, more responsible, more confident and more open to explore new opportunities through academic and extracurricular activities. So what to start with if you have already decided to send your child to a private school? First of all, decide what type of the school it should be, single-sex school or co-ed. Second, make a research to find out the ranking and overall performance of the school. Third, uh, visit open houses for the private schools of your interest and try to understand the difference in programs, approaches and values. Fourth, attend annual private school expos. Um, you will have a chance to get acquainted with all the schools at the same time, at the same place. School representatives uh, will be happy to answer all your questions and you will also receive their introductory packages. Fifth, ask parents of the private schoolers for their honest opinion and feedback. Sixth and lastly, check the geographical location of the school of your choice and estimate your commute in the mornings and in the afternoons uh, during rush hours. You might see a lot of reasons to move closer to the school of your choice. While finding the right house is all about location, location and location. Uh, when it comes to private schools, the motto is fit, fit and fit. There is no one-size-fits-all approach. Your family circumstances, the individual strengths and needs of your child, your education philosophy and vision will all contribute to your uh, choice of a school. Private and independent schools are numerous and diverse. There are schools with excellent academic and athletic programs. Some schools uh, follow a certain educational philosophy, such as Montessori or they may serve uh, a particular religious community. There are arts-based schools, all-boys schools, all-girls schools, boarding schools, special needs uh, schools, preschools, daycare, and the list goes and goes. To see if a school meets your expectations, there are 10 most important questions you have to ask. First, what's the maximum number of kids in a class at your school? Second, what's the quality of the teaching staff? Second, what is the relationship between students and teachers? Fourth, where do the students go after graduation and what is the percentage of students accepted to the university of their first choice? Fifth, does a school have art, gym, music, extracurriculars, uh, access to a playing field? Six, how diverse the population in this school is? Different outlooks, backgrounds, beliefs, and so on. Seventh, how does a school support students who struggle academically? Eight, how does a school support students who struggle socially? Ninth, uh, how many recesses kids have and uh, how long they are? Tenth, how does a school deal with bullying? Your task is to narrow down the options to select two, three schools to focus on. When it is time to apply to schools uh, of your choice, it is better not to limit yourself to submitting an application to just one 
perfect school. Some schools have low acceptance rates and you might need a kind of a backup plan. For example, University of Toronto schools, the York School, accept only 20% of applicants, Crescent School 25%, Branksome Hall 30% and so on. Especially the competition is getting high for grades 9, 10 and 11. While you can apply to any grade, typically the entrance years are grade 5, grade 7 and 9. From my experience, to make your application stronger, you may consider submitting your papers early. Sometimes an exam and interview are required. Your child might need some preparations, even though admission officers warn against being too prepared. I also advise to be honest and clear about your child's needs. The schools are interested in appropriate fit for your kids as much as you are. They would like to understand if a kid really wants to be in this environment or it's just a parent's wish, how active a child can be in this community and what your child's strengths and challenges are. So you've submitted your application and uh, you are waiting to be notified about acceptance. Still, there are a few points that every parent should keep in mind. First, there is likely more than one school at which your child would, would succeed and prosper. Don't be overly disappointed if your child doesn't gain admission to one particular school. Second, don't be crushed on less than stellar entrance exam results. Most schools will consider more than just test scores. Third, share true information with the school. The goal is to ensure your kids' needs uh, are well accommodated. Once you have accepted a school, have confidence in your choice. Make the most of the fact that your family is now a part of a unique school environment. Typically, parents are very engaged in everyday life and have lots of meetings, events and conversations uh, going on. I hope I was able to share some insights about choosing a private school in Toronto. These thoughts are based on my own experience as a parent of three kids who went through different systems of education in Canada. I would like to remind you here that choosing a school often results in buying a new home. Uh, I would like to offer my clients both my experience with schools and my professional knowledge of Toronto real estate market. Don't hesitate to reach out, contact us by calling, texting, emailing or even commenting down below. We are actively using WhatsApp, Viber and WeChat for your convenience. Also, I would like to remind you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to hit that bell button to be notified every time I post a new video about living in Toronto as well as its real estate. Please comment down below um, so I know your questions and if you are thinking of moving to Toronto or simply relocate to a great neighborhood, I will be happy to help. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next videos.